Welcome to part three of the series where I talk about the lessons that I learned after getting laid off last week. I'm going to get right into it because I'm not here to waste your time. So I'm going to split this video into two chapters. The first one's going to be the practical lessons that I learned, and the second is going to be the more ideological lessons that I learned. So starting immediately with the practical, the first thing I learned is that job security is not guaranteed, never guaranteed, even for developers. And this is going to be regardless of your position, unless you're the CEO. So when I was working at YesFit, you know, I was kind of, uh, I was told a few times that despite the fact that there were, you know, some funny things happening in other areas of the company, the dev team was gonna be always going to be solid. And this was primarily because we were the ones fixing a lot of the issues that was keeping the company afloat. Whether I was fixing bugs that were causing poor reviews in the app store, fixing tracking issues, or adding new features that they thought would increase our monthly active users, or our subscription revenue or anything like that, you know, who created those things. So we always assumed that, you know, we would be straight, but um, I learned the hard way that that's not the case. What I did also learn is that in volatile environments, sometimes your perceived value is correlated with your specialization. So in simpler terms, there's two other devs that remain on the team with the CTO currently, and I'm gonna to refer to them as dev one and dev two to respect their privacy. And this is separate from the UX UI engineer. So both dev one and dev two were specialized to React Web and React Native for mobile. Now they you know, had the ability to jump between platforms, but they were established as leads for those particular platforms. They were around longer and before me and the other dev who got laid off uh, had joined the company. And they, in my mind, had the mind share and the CEO and the product manager's eyes as um, specialists directly tied to the success of those platforms. So they were essentially ind you know, indispensable at the time. Because of that fact, I recommend you be careful and conscious about your decisions to go above and beyond at any particular company. If there's one thing I know is like, look, people, companies complain that, you know, millennials or zennials, Gen Z or whatever, that nobody's loyal to companies. Like people will ghost you or quit without notice, but this is why, because companies will just as quickly as they'll hire you on and, you know, task you with fixing their larger problems, they will just as easily and just as quickly drop you. And they will do so in the same fashion as being ghosted from a relationship. I got left with no method of communication to anybody on the team. I couldn't even contact my HR manager. I had, to con I had to find her on LinkedIn, luckily I knew her name, to just even be able to get the final information about how my check would be handled and like you know any other logistical information around that. She even mentioned that she wanted to send me an email with that information, but the company never collected anybody's personal email, so as a result of being kicked out of my YesFit email, we had no way of contacting each other. So, But that's gonna be related to a different point uh, going forward. So yes, basically, in this case, I was not specialized enough to be seen as valuable, at least in this particular uh, incident, uh, incident in my eyes. And even in the words of my boss, when I asked him for his thoughts, um, he said, quote, this had nothing to do with your skills or personality and everything to do with the circumstances, which I understand. Dev1 and Dev2 had established themselves as product leads on web and mobile respectively. So you were a victim of your own willingness to tackle a variety of different things. And that was something that I attest to. Like I was very much willing to do whatever I could because I wanted to find that place that I could take ownership, that place that I could drive high impact because that's something that I just personally desire. And unfortunately, in this particular circumstance, I was not able to do that before things got to this drastic place. But um, do I regret it? No, because I did learn a lot of skills that's gonna bet that better me, not only as, as a developer, but as a future business owner, I got to see more sides of, the, of a business that's running and, and sinking at the same time to get the, the knowledge necessary to ensure that going forward, when I am running my own business, as I run my own business, I'm not gonna make those same mistakes. Like throwing all my eggs in the Facebook basket, knowing that they're not as reliable as... Anyways, another practical lesson that I learned was to keep a record of your, the company documents you sign and make sure you do so offline from corporate managed accounts. Like I said, the way that I got immediately kicked from all systems were was comparable to being ghosted by a date. Like all communications immediately ceased with no way to contact anyone and no way to retrieve anything important from those communication platforms like email or shared storage. 
you're going to lose access to everything and everyone immediately. <laughs> All of these things just kind of added to that insult to injury I mentioned in the last video. Like th just the way that it was handled was so heartless and thoughtless that it really just like, it felt like they just took you and everything you had just dropped you on the street and drove off like you with nothing. I wouldn't make the assumption that you're gonna have access to anything, so make sure when you're signing company documents or employee handbooks or notices of acknowledgement or literally anything, just save a copy on your account, keep it in a hard drive, keep it in a portfolio, but just make sure you got a hard copy of it because you might end up losing it, and that might be useful to you later. Another thing that I found uh, that I ended up learning from the situation is to, in addition to keeping a record of the documents and stuff that you sign, I find that it's really helpful to keep a record of the things that you accomplish um, and make sure you also do it from, you know, offline and from those accounts. When I was actually uh, preparing for my interview to make the transition from my contract to joining YesFit full time, I created a document called the value that I bring to YesFit. And basically in that I had kept record of all the major things or the highlights that I uh, accomplished during my time as a contractor. So I was, for example, I put like, you know, I uh, completed 576 story tasks or put in 56 hours of overtime or, you know, contributed to like these major areas in our development efforts that had this impact. Basically, I tried to find ways to find like the different areas that I had input and direct effect on the company itself. And I tracked like how my efforts affected the company, right? So I was making sure I was keeping track of like, what were the monthly active users and our revenue, peak revenue in a day and um, our new user registrations before I joined and what were they after I had completed my contract? Did I help contribute to an increase? Was it an increase or a decrease? And in that case, it was a pretty substantial increase because we re released a new version of the mobile app that helped out a lot. But I feel like doing those things is gonna help you going forward as you update your portfolio for your next gig and update your resume, you know what I mean? So uh, definitely recommend doing that. If you're not even, if you're not in a position where you've started doing that, it's never too late to start now. Start keeping track. Keeping a record of what you do as you do will make your life easier going forward. That I guarantee. And yeah, those were most of the practical lessons that I learned in this case. Uh, just to kind of uh, go through them on a quick high level again. Um, job security is never going to be a guarantee. In volatile environments, sometimes your perceived practical value is going to be correlated to specialization or ownership over a specific product or you know area in the company. Make sure you're careful about what you decide to invest your time and energy in. Keep a record of company documents that you sign and make sure you do it off, offline of corporate accounts and do the same with the things that you accomplish or the highlights in your, you know, in your tenure at that company. Uh, and then quickly, I want to move into the more ideological lessons that I learned. Pay attention to your intuition or that gut feeling. There's a reason it's there. The entire team was aware of the different pain points across the company and we all had different opinions on what should have been prioritized. None of the team's ideas aligned with the vision of the product manager and the CEO. They never correlated, right? Um, personally, I felt the iceberg coming that would rock the company's ship, but I naively believed my boss's words, which he also believed, that the dev team would, be, would remain secure and our names would be reserved on the lifeboats should that iceberg hit. Between the side quest that I had where I was trying to get to know different parts of the company and help influence people to make to take ownership over their roles and make better decisions that would end up improving the company's performance in all different areas. And, you know, as I discovered the numerous areas in which we had such severe disorganization, lack of strategy and, you know, localized expertise, I saw a lot of red flags that in my gut and in my head, I knew like, eh, this seems kind of off. I don't know if this is gonna be, you know, a good deal, but I ignored them. And I did not, I did not prepare for <laughs> my day of reckoning to say, and I should have, and I could have, I think. So with that being said, just if you, if you have that gut feeling, if you feel like something's off or that something could end up going wrong in the future, pay attention to that. Make sure you, you, you do something prepared. And that leads into the second ideological lesson of always make sure you have a contingency plan, even if you are comfortable. I was super comfortable here. I was working remote. I was making great money. I was in, I loved my team and like everything with this job was pretty great. Like. I was very comfortable and very satisfied with where I was. Understanding that given the circumstances, I couldn't really have accurately predicted that this would happen, I still feel like I could have been more prepared. 
So even if you're in a comfortable position and you don't think things are going to go awry, just make sure you have your nest egg, your rainy day, or your backup plan just in case. Uh, because I don't want you to get caught off guard or devastated like I was. Especially if this is your first job. Like I can imagine a lot of people who follow my content are either looking to get into the industry or are just now emerging in the industry. And your first job may be at a smaller company or maybe at a startup where the industry is volatile. And I don't want you to be put in a position where you're making great money, you're having a great time. I mean, I want you to enjoy, you know, the strides you've have, you may have made in life. But at the same time, I still want you to be smart just in case something happens because I don't want you to be left feeling like you're stuck and that you invested all this time and energy and don't have anything really to show for it. Another ideological lesson is like, don't take business matters personally, it's just business. Um, initially, I was enraged by the way the company handled the layoff, mostly because of my own principles and beliefs around how I believe people should be treated. But after processing and releasing those charged emotions, I was able to move forward and with a clear head into planning my next moves. When it comes to like making business decisions such as layoffs, those things happen sometimes. The business doesn't make the best decisions, they have poor leadership, poor management or poor strategy and as a result they start sinking and when they start sinking they can't afford to pay everybody all the time like i said in my previous videos i was not mad that this was the situation of the company I, I get it it happens right but in my mind it was more so about how they handle it and unfortunately you have a lot of people who despite having the privilege of being in power and having the influence over people's lives they still decide that the risk that they may put themselves at by giving those people the benefit of the doubt or the benefit or the the consideration of notice that hey this is what's going on and as much as we want to try and turn it around just in case i want you guys to be prepared i want you guys to have notice and you know, there's people on the other side who will be like, oh, yeah, if you give people a notice, then maybe everybody will quit. Well, guess what? That's a risk you take because the only reason the business is in this position is because of your leadership. And if you think that other people should suffer because of that, like, you know, I can say a lot of things, expletives excluded, you know, you shouldn't be you needed to figure something else out because obviously you don't have the expertise or obviously you don't have the ability to make those decisions that's going to keep the business afloat. I don't think that the people that you're bringing on to help you rise to the top should have to suffer for that. But that's just my opinion. You know, I have different opinions on how I'd run a business. And in my mind, the captain should have sank with a ship. For the most part, don't take it personally. I got laid off, but it wasn't a reflection of my inability as a, as a creator. It wasn't my, a reflection of my inability as an employee or as a developer. I know that I'm highly skilled and I know that I have a very particular set of skills and a very particular neurodivergent way of thinking that allows me to draw patterns and match circumstances in a situation where I could have all this information that seems unrelated. I can connect the dots and make a bigger picture. And not a lot of people can do that. And I, I feel like I have something special. I know that I have something special. And as a result, I'm not afraid that, you know, I'm not going to figure it out. I know that I can get another job fairly easily. One of the things that, you know, for those of you who are new to the industry or don't know much yet, once you've been in the industry for one or two years, getting a job is a lot easier than when you're first starting. You will get flooded 24 seven one opportunities. And I was getting flooded since before I joined YesFit. So I know that I'll be able to find another job, no problem. I'm now in a place where I have different priorities and I'm going to take the next 30 days to take all the energy that I was investing in YesFit and I'm going to throw it into Umber Society and this 50K in 100 Days Challenge and see what I can really make of it. And I'm going to make sure I take you guys along the way and ensure that you have every opportunity to learn as much as humanly possible from my experiences. Make sure you just keep it moving. Don't, 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 don't take it personally and don't beat yourself up because an unfortunate situation happened to you. The last thing I learned is that not everyone's going to see your value and it's all about perspective. I naively believe that the added visibility that came along with working at a smaller company would encourage the recognition and appreciation of highly driven, highly motivated, and highly effective people. But I realized that it's all relative to what leaders perceive as valuable at the moment and that may differ between leaders. And that may differ over time, may change. I was somebody who thought that it would be recognized as notable as taking initiative that not only was I accomplishing the tasks that I were assigned, but you know I was going above and beyond and creating, generating reports that laid out my thought process, why I made the decisions that I made, and I tracked the metrics and the uh, results of those decisions and the impact that I have. And I made sure I tracked how everything that I did resulted in some marker of improvement or notable you know notable results 
but um and i went as far as like reaching out into other departments and encouraging people who felt very discouraged about their position in the company or about their ability to impact or create change i would encourage them to adjust mentality around how they saw their work and how they saw the opportunity to to generate an impact within their scope within their sphere of influence that would propel the company forward and i was doing that in different areas aside from marketing for aside from fixing our branding like I was doing all kinds of stuff that was far beyond just being a regular developer. And unfortunately, despite all that, I still was not seen as valuable enough to be kept. I and mean, that's just the bottom line. I mean, anybody can say it. And I'm not going to say that I am more valuable, or more important than anyone else. Because at the end of the day, I know for a fact I wouldn't have wanted somebody in the marketing team who's probably making 30000 a year or thirty five, or, you know, because I don't think they were paying them a lot who is more likely to be in a position where they are living check to check or, you know, more likely to struggle to be thrown in the same position that I was just then. I'd, I'd rather it just be me because I can recover. I know I'm going to be okay. But at the same time, I know that the value that I was producing had much more return on the investment or a much greater ROI than some of the other things that were being produced in the company. But Again, it's all about what the leaders or the people in power perceive as valuable. So you have to make sure you remember that and understand that what you may think is valuable in the moment may not line up with them. And at the end of the day, you can't control that. But to kind of review and go over the high level ideological lessons that I learned, um, make sure you pay attention to your intuition or that gut feeling. Always have a contingency plan, even if you are comfortable in your position. Do not take business matters personally. It's just business and not everyone's going to see your value because it's all perspective. And uh, for those of you who are worried about me, if any, thank you. I'm going to be okay. Um, What happens next for me? I'm going to grind. I am going to grind because you know what? I have a fire in me now because now I feel like I got something to prove. You know what I mean? And maybe that's just my personality, but like now I'd be like, oh, really? like you, you thought I wasn't worth, you know, keeping around. Okay, I'm going to show you how, what, what, you going, what you were missing, right? So I have enough money to last me around maybe two months or so. Not really, but pretty close. So I'm going to take the next 30 days and I'm going to invest all my time in Umber Society. And for those of you who don't know, Umber Society is the business that Nicole Young and I created on our road to making 50k in 100 days that challenge that we're on i believe we're on day 24 um i got a lot of content coming around that just uh kind of catch you guys up on the process thus far and what 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 direction we're going yeah i'm gonna invest all my time in umber society content creation personal development and i'm gonna see what happens when i take all this energy and i pour it into my own thing if the right job opportunity presents itself i'll accept it but i'm not in a rush i'm not you know i'm highly skilled like i said and i'm in demand a privilege that I don't take for granted. And I don't want to waste this opportunity to try and build something that I found valuable in teaching anyone willing to learn along the way. I want to take the the skills that I have and I really want to, I really want to drive high impact on small businesses that are ran by people of color, women led businesses. I want to impact the community, man, my community, black and Latino, Latinx, Latina. Like I want to, I want to impact our community and take the skills that I've learned to try and bridge the gap that a lot of us are facing right now, especially with the advent of COVID and everything. So um, that's what I'm gonna be focused on. And I hope you guys follow along and stay tuned. If there's anything throughout this process or in the previous videos that um, you want me to go more in depth on or have questions, don't hesitate to reach out, comment. I do my best to answer every question that I come across. And uh, I look forward to seeing you later.